Hey everyone, welcome back to OSD Recovery's YouTube channel. I have a video today, I, I talk about uh, discipline a lot and habits. So I wanted to make a little bit of a unique video and, and I'm gonna title this video, How to Practice Discipline and Life in General. Uh, this is not a guide to tell people, uh, you know, this is the things that you need to do and or if you do one of these things, it will be a tip or a trick in order to get better from OCD because it, it isn't like that. But I do think it is important to talk about why discipline is so important when it comes to reaching your goals. And this goes way beyond OCD and anxiety recovery. Uh, before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're new, welcome. If you're old, glad to see you back. Uh, please comment down below. Let me know about some of your discipline habits that uh, you might have or maybe discipline habits that you kind of fell out of and you're trying to get back. Um, things you might want to ask me about my disciplines, uh, things I, I did in my recovery journey, things I do now, and stuff like that. So the first thing I want to talk about, I have my uh, in front of me, my list of things I want to talk about, is I want to talk about the difference between discipline and passion. Now, passion is great. And I don't think that many people get to a state of passion where it's how social media and YouTube gurus talk about what passion is. So in my opinion, passion is something that has many ups and downs. Because when you're trying to fulfill a passion of yours or a purpose that you deem fit, so one of my purposes is helping people with OCD. Uh, now, I don't need anyone to know that purpose. I don't need anyone to respect that purpose. That purpose is my purpose that I've, I've assigned to myself. It's not a universal purpose. I don't believe in universal purposes. The only universal purpose is, is I'm alive and I will die. So dying is actually the only universal purpose that I think uh, there is. Uh, as Steve Jobs says, you know, out with the old, in with the new, new innovations, new technologies, new thought process. And he said that death is probably the single best invention of life in his 2004 commencement speech, which I watch every once in a while. Maybe I'll watch it today. I haven't watched that in, in about six, seven months. And, but discipline is how you actually work towards your passion. And that doesn't mean you feel great all the time. It doesn't mean you're always gonna be on your toes. You're always going to be happy about what you're doing. I think it's a misconception that social media has, has plastered on people, especially the younger kids right now. The younger kids have uh, probably the lowest, the, the lowest low frustration tolerance I've ever seen. And it's nobody's fault. It's just a pro they're a product of their time period, their generation. Just how, say, you know, the drafts during World War II and Vietnam War, for an example, produced very tough individuals. And I'm not just talking about Men, I'm talking about type ideo type ideo tough ideologies from men with tongue twister. Tough ideologies from men and women. Uh, because of everything people had, to, you know, the, a lot of the factories shut down. They redid those factories for, for tanks and weapons and stuff like that. Um, all you got to do is watch Saving Private Ryan and you see the type of person that would make it out of D-Day. So um, today there's a lot more comfort. But it's not anyone's fault. That generation isn't better than this generation. If this generation was born in that generation, they would have acted the same exact way something that uh, most people talk about. So the discipline is how you actually move towards your goals. And Jim Rohn, who Rob and I talk about a lot, who's Tony Robbins' mentor, um, he was, passed away in 2007, one of my favorite things he said was this. He said that, uh, how did he say it? Uh, persistence is patience and action. Whoa. What a great fucking quote. Persistence is patience and action. Because in order to reach any of your goals, there needs to be some sort of patience and persistence and willingness to admit you're wrong and willingness to, to, to look outside yourself and help other people uh, in other areas of your life. Because it's very easy when you have OCD or anxiety or the kind of like self-centered focused social media world. And again, there's nothing inherently wrong with being selfish. Looking for food for yourself to survive is an act of selfish behavior. So when people talk about being selfless, there's not a single person on earth that would fit the definition of being selfless. Because if you're drinking water to stay alive, that's an act of selfishness. So it just isn't as simple as people make it out to be. Now, the second thing, second thing I want to talk about and how I uh, practice discipline uh, when it came to OCD recovery. Now, this won't be specific to OCD recovery uh, because there's a lot of things that we see when we're coaching people where they're coming in the webinars that we talk about. And those things are getting the books on the reading list. If you don't know where the books are, they're at ocdrecovery.com underneath the resource tab. Then we have disputing, which are exercises in the book. So that's really cool. Let me pull that up real quick. So first book on the reading list, how to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable about anything. Yes, anything. 
And then there's the disputing homework. So this is what one of the homework sections look like. And this is how you break down your beliefs. So writing them down on paper is very, very, very key. Um, wearing discomfort, learning how to actually wear discomfort, sitting with the discomfort. One of the, the, the things that I think really held me back was I didn't wear discomfort nearly as good as I thought I did. I think we all do that, right? We, we make some progress, we get cocky, especially someone that had belief systems like I did and perfectionism belief systems and always trying to be right. Um, I got really cocky on that and realized I was wrong. I just was wrong and, I, and it's okay to be wrong. I mean, I, I, I was wrong on many things like that. Uh, I typed down the patience versus pers persistence. And so remember, like I said, persistence is patience and action. I love that quote. And then doing your exposures, facing your fears and your behavioral changes. And all those things are really key. Those are things that you can try to put disciplines to. And when you're doing anything, so, so when you're reading the books, when you're doing your disputing, let's see if there's, a, when you're wearing discomfort, when you're facing exp, uh, your fears, none of these things are particularly comfortable. So there will be a level of discomfort present when you're doing these things. And I think understanding that is so, so key. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is mourning. Uh, these all can apply to night as well. So I'll put morning plus night. And I think that, because uh, um, they're, they're very applicable. The first thing to talk about is balance, okay? If, when I would get so strict about certain routines, it kind of would throw me off because I, I had no sway. There's nothing wrong with having really set goals and routines. Uh, another one of my favorite quotes by a, a fav fav famous businessman named Ivan Meisner, he said, a, a, good, a, a good leader is someone with procedures and systems and routines, but is willing to change those at any moment. I said, whoa, that's, that's a great quote. That's a terrific quote. Uh, having systems and procedures and things that you're working towards, but realizing that this isn't working and then being able to change on a dime. And that's much easier said than done. So inside this morning slash night routine where I can balance things is hygiene. Um, I wasn't brushing my teeth. Uh, I wasn't really taking showers. If I was, I wasn't washing myself. I just was sitting in there in a bathtub without any any like soap to just avoid my sensations. I was su substituting a hot warmth sensation from my sensory motor and anxiety sensations, which wasn't good. Breakfast, I, I didn't eat breakfast uh, or dinner for night. Uh, I, I, I barely ate or if I did eat, I would binge on the other side of that. Uh, reading and journaling, not compulsively, but doing those actions. Uh, I have my journal right next to me. And then next to my journal, I have my... Um, uh, I'm going to cr cross this out right now while we're on the video. So I wrote underneath my OCD tasks for the day, my, dis my discipline YouTube video. So I can cross that out and just cross out that I came from a webinar. Now I've had uh, a couple one the ones today and I had a webinar I just came from. Great webinar. If you haven't been to our webinars, please email info at ocdrecovery.com. We have a bunch of good ones coming up. And I'm, I, I feel a little tired right now and I have more stuff to do throughout the day, but I thought, hey, what better time to jump on and do this video than right now? Here comes Daisy and they were sitting outside when she's panting. And I think that's a great way to build discipline. I don't do things compulsively anymore to prove to myself why I need discipline, but I, I, I put discipline in routines in my life to work towards my goals, even if I don't hit them. And I think that's okay. Uh, this is a big one. Um, getting ready for work. Now, let's say you work from home and you work behind a screen and no one sees you. I do think it is important to dress up. Uh, you could, we could talk about this uh, and debate this. I think it would be a great thing to debate. But I think getting ready for work and acting as if you're going into a meeting, like let's say you, you're in banking and you work from home, I think it's important to get ready, maybe wear your suit and, and sit in the office because that builds frustration tolerance and shows yourself that it is important to get ready and go throughout the day. And I think that's really key. Um, no lounging in bed in the morning if it's compulsive. Uh, one thing that worked for me, there's nothing wrong with lounging in the morning on a lazy Sunday or something, but I was doing a compulsively snoozing. I think many people do this. So what I, what I did, and I still do now, um, when my alarm goes up, I throw myself up and I jump in the shower and I wake myself up. Whether I'm going to the gym or I'm reading, my mornings kind of look like this. I wake up, I either get ready for the gym or I read. Um, if I go to the gym, I shower to wake myself up. Uh, I have a morning shake before I go to the gym and then I listen to some music on the way to the gym. Uh, if, I'm, if I do the opposite, if it's a non-gym day, I wake up uh, and I read for 30 minutes, uh, 20 pages, 30 pages, so forth, so forth. I actually just got back into that discipline. I, I, was, I, I didn't read for, um, uh, I, I read, but I, 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 was, I was losing the habit and I wanted to bring it back in. So I applied acceptance to myself and brought that back in. I think those things are really key. 
Uh, there's two more things I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is health. And inside health, we have exercise, cardio, and nutrition. Now, before I go into any of these for discipline purposes, balance is key. Uh, you don't have to cut out any sort of foods. You can eat sugars. And we're not talking about people who have, you know, like type 2 diabetes and stuff. We're talking about people thinking they have to make a dietary change or they must make an exercise change in order to recover. Balance with nutrition and exercise is tremendous, but one can never exercise ever and still recover from OCD if they, they become more rational. I think there's a benefit to exercising when you're obviously struggling and with the endorphin release and good for structure and for building discipline and stuff like that. Um, for someone like myself, if you're watching this and you have body dysmorphia, uh, maybe an eating disorder, moving away from counting your macros, your macronutrients, aka your calories, protein, carbs, and fat, getting away from moving that, creating a new healthy, sustained balance on food, uh, and not running programs is key. Uh, I think balance in exercise is very, very, very good. Um, I try to exercise uh, three days a week with weights. I don't have a program. I do full body, so I go there and do certain movements. Um, and I hike on the weekends, and sometimes I hike more if I'm on vacation. And that balance has been very, very beneficial for me. Because I realized that, uh, you know, I always think about if I lost exercise tomorrow, how would that make me feel? Because I really do love exercise. I love all forms of exercise. And I think I really need to be honest with myself about that because I was holding it very conditionally. Uh, that's one of the very, very last things that can pinprick at me at times and stuff like that. And that fear of fear response. And I think it's important to cover that. Supplements. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with taking a multivitamin or a vitamin D and so forth. But if you're doing those in order to definitely feel better, that will need to change. Uh, we don't have to avoid any supplements whatsoever. Um, I know it's easy to think that, but we don't actually need to do that. And I think it's so, so key. The last thing I want to talk about is socializing. And inside socializing, we have um, cutting out alcohol, false memory, real event, or thinking that all alcohol is bad. I see TikToks where people say, alcohol is terrible for you. It's the worst thing ever. Not true. Going out. Uh, uh, going out again, going to the movies, not just watching movies on your couch and going out, engaging with life, meeting new people, going on dates, vacations, and events. And the reason why socializing was such a great discipline for me is because when people are suffering, what they don't want to do is they don't want to bring any sort of discomfort with them out places. The big ones are the weddings, the meeting new people, the dates, um, uh, social settings, um, for different plethora of fears. So going out and engaging in life again was one of the most important things I could have done. As many of you know, I'm an avid hiker. Uh, I have a 14 year coming up here soon. I would show you a picture. If you type in Mount Sneffels, S-N-E-F-F-L-E-S, -E -E type that in. We're doing that one in five days. I'm very, very excited about that. I have a couple friends coming in. I feel bad for them. They're coming from sea level. Yikes, three miles in the sky. Good luck breathing. Um, and you know, I, I, I just realized that OCD wasn't going to go anywhere. I wasn't going to go anywhere. And I, I, even still, to this day, I mean, even when you're you're re recovered and think you're doing really well, and it, it can co come back at any moment. And I, I, I think having that knowledge that you can really bulletproof yourself as much as you can by changing your beliefs, but there's no guarantee. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun making this. Again, if you're interested in the webinars, the coaching services, please email info at ocrecovery.com. Uh, the books are on the reading list, OCD Recovery, resource tab. And, and, and one last thing too, um, you know, I, 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 this is something I just love to do. I, I like to read. I, I like reading. So, you know, we have even at my desk, you know, the Albert Ellis Myth of Self-Esteem, Albert Ellis's uh, REBT, It Worked For Me, It Could Work For You Too, um, The Lives of the Stoic, which is a great history book on Stoicism. I always keep, you know, my stubbornly refuse on deck here. And then... You know, I have a couple of uh, my rehab books here, uh, Clinical Reasoning and Spine Pain Protocols for Low Back. Like, I just, I enjoy reading. Um, uh, I no longer need to read to prove to myself my, my worth. I was doing that conditionally, and I, I've moved away from that. And I, I read because I enjoy reading and I enjoy learning uh, and, and, and bettering myself. And even if I don't better myself, it's not the end of the world. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.